Amen. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Joy. My name is Yvonne. This morning, I come to you on this Good Friday, known to many Christians throughout the world, as we are going into um, the great resurrecting um, Sunday, Easter Sunday, known to many. I come to bring to you a message, one of the seven last words spoken of Jesus upon the cross. I'm on travel, I'm preparing myself for travel for this weekend, but I just had to take a moment to bring this word to you. Um, such um, uh, an amazing message, and uh, I do hope you uh, enjoy it. Um, coming from out of the scripture text, uh, and first, let's um, have a word of prayer. Father God, we just come to you this morning just thanking you for your awesomeness, thanking you for your greatness. We thank you for your love and kindness and tender mercies that you have just poured out um, upon us, and we're ever so grateful. And Father God, as we go into this word, we ask that you speak to our hearts, Lord God, and may seed be sown, Father God, on good fertile soil, that it might take root, that it might spring up within us, and bringing forth fruit, much fruit, and more fruit, to the glory and honor of your most precious name. In Christ Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Now, the scripture text taken this morning is um, Matthew 27th chapter, the 45th through the 46th verse. The subject that I choose is forsaken or exalted, forsaken or exalted. And it's based upon the seven last word wherein Jesus um, cried out, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness all over the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a very loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabbathani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus' fourth word, marking the climax of his suffering, for a lost world rang out in the hearing of the crowd and in the hearing of his father. This fourth word, which is the opening line of Psalm 22, Jesus cries from the cross of Calvary. He cried, recall the cry of Israel and of all innocent persons <clears throat> who had ever suffered. <coughs> Excuse me. Why? Have you forsaken me? He cries in a very loud voice. A sorrowful complaint of feeling as though God is not present. One that may be applied to any child feeling helpless, pressed down, and overwhelmed with the very fires of life. Jesus, being fully man, pours out his soul before God while suffering on the cross. A hopeless, humiliating, miserable, wretched state Jesus had been reduced to. He felt a natural overwhelming to pass through such great sorrows. Yet his zeal and his love prevailed. Jesus declares the holiness of God in his greatest sufferings. Here in the scripture, we see two things that is occurring. We see for the first time in the life and ministry of Jesus, he refers to his father as God. For the first time in the life and ministry of Jesus, he refers to his father as God. The only time throughout his entire life, Jesus speaks directly to the Father, but addresses him impersonally as God. Clearly something has changed in the relationship of the Son and the Father. It is because of the sins of the world being laid on Jesus that, his, that the fellowship between the Son and the Father has been broken 
but the relationship we see is still intact. Secondly, we see God the Father having turned his back on the Son. Throughout Jesus' entire life, he experienced the presence and the glory of God. But now, the Father has laid the sins of mankind on his Son and forsaken him. Let him suffer so that sinners can be saved and never forsaken by God. However, there's a more embedded in this text, so much more. I ask that um, just for a moment, I just want to share with you um, a little more about the utterances in which Jesus spoke these words upon the cross. Um, with a little help, I'm going to refer to the Hebrew and Greek um, Aramaic text language. We actually see that in Psalm 22, 20, in, in the first verse, I'm sorry, in tw Psalm 22, the first verse, and Matthew 27, chapter 46, verse, we see the first part of David and Jesus' cry is the same. Eli, Eli, lama sabbathani, which in text means why or why, for what purpose, and always introduces a question. But when we look at the last words of the two texts in Hebrew, David said, lama asthani meaning why have you forsaken, abandoned, or left me? And in the Greek Aramaic translated, Jesus cries out, Lama Sabathani, which is to say, why have you crucified me? That's really deep. Now this is the Greek Aramaic, Lama Sabathani, is to say, why have you crucified me? Both words mean to give up something. The first by forsaking it, and the second by dying to it. Jesus actually asks, my God, my God, why have you given me up as sacrifice? Why have you given me up to die? Which includes abandonment, but it incorporates so much more, especially when we look at the word sacrifice. I believe that in Matthew 27, 46 verse, Jesus, the living word, reinterpreted David's cry which would soon redefine our very reason for living. When David felt forsaken, God had a higher purpose in mind. He was to be king over Israel. But when Jesus looked forsaken, and you notice I said looked forsaken, God had a higher purpose for him in mind. Jesus was being offered up as the Passover lamb, the anointing sacrifice as the savior of the world. He was offered as a sacrifice as the savior of the world. The forsakenness of Jesus was the latter. His sacrifice was front and center. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John, first chapter, 29, 36 verse. Jesus knew exactly what was happening. He knew of his impending death. He knew it was coming. Jesus knew the purpose in which he was here. So Jesus gave himself over to be arrested, to be taken from judgment hall 
to Judgment Hall. He was mocked and he was beaten, brutally murdered. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The very chastisement of our peace was upon him. And it is with those many stripes that we are healed. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord, and the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. I lay down my life that I may take it up again. Now I ask this question. Does that sound like someone who would feel forsaken? Jesus giving up his life, making the sacrifice, knowing his purpose in which he came here to fulfill. And he gave himself over to be arrested, to be judged. Does that sound like one who would, be, would feel forsaken? Jesus' cry is not the complaint of a descriptive victim. It is not the complaint of one out of desperation, but it is the shout of a victorious Savior, our victorious Savior. Jesus saw that there was more coming out of his obedience to the Father as he hung upon the cross of Calvary. He saw the hearts of men being turned. He saw the hearts of men in their lives returned to the Lord our God. He saw the burden of the people removed through troublesome time. Forsaken, I ask, or exalted. Jesus, the victor, over sin and death, King of kings and Lord of lords. He saw himself reunited with the Father, enjoying the very splendor and glory once again. Forsaken or exalted, I ask. Jesus, his triumphant victory. Victory for you and victory for me. Victory of the Lord's redeemed. Victory for sons and daughters, worshiping Jesus Christ, the risen King, forsaken or exalted. Just as Jesus suffered as a result of him being the Son of God and to die on the cross to fulfill God's divine purpose for his life we too must go through not simply because we are Christians but because we are children of the most high God we have purpose I know that there are times when the heat is really on we truly do feel the fire at times and it seems like heaven is silent to our cries. It may even look like God has forsaken you, but remember that he hasn't because he promised that he would never leave us or forsake us. Know that your pain has purpose. It is our testimony by which we are overcome bringing witness to the life, power, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, whose spirit is alive, hallelujah, yearable, and well within us. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for my heavenly home when Jesus is my portion? 
a constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I thank you for tuning in. And once again, I wish you all a happy, uh, wonderful Good Friday and a splendid Resurrection Sunday. I ask that you pray for me as I travel during this uh, holiday uh, weekend. Blessings to you and yours. Until next time, God bless you all.